When my administration took office, our immediate mission was clear. We needed to stop the Great Recession from turning into a Great Depression. And economists of every stripe were warning that was a real possibility. And that meant that we had to make some decisions swiftly, boldly, and not always popular, but decisions that were necessary. It wasn't a time for satisfying the politics of the moment. It wasn't time for just playing to the cameras. It was time for doing what was right. That's why we helped stabilize our financial system. Not because we felt any compassion for big banks, but because not, but because not doing so would have endangered the savings and dreams of millions more Americans. And by the way, I was committed to ensuring that if taxpayers were going to provide temporary assistance to keep our financial system afloat, then it actually had to be temporary. And I was determined to get back every single dime, and we are well on our way to doing that. Getting back every single dime from those banks. In fact, one battle we're having right now is we think the largest banks should be assessed a fee so the taxpayers are held harmless for the assistance that you've been given. As you might imagine, the banks are not enthusiastic about that. And it, won't, and it won't surprise you to learn that they've got a few friends in Congress who are willing to go along. But you know, Harry Reid's not one of those folks who are willing to go along. We're going to get your money back because Harry Reid's going to make sure you get your money back. We helped shore up the American auto industry. That wasn't popular. I understood why. Folks felt like these companies should reap the consequences of bad management decisions in the past, just like any other company would. But if we had let GM and Chrysler go under, it would have been hundreds of thousands of hardworking Americans who paid the price. Not just folks at those companies themselves, but at suppliers and dealers all across the country. So we told them, if you're willing to take the tough and painful steps you make, uh, that are needed for you to become more competitive, then we're willing to invest in your future. And as a result, auto production in the United States of America is up 69% from the first three months of 2009. <laughs> GM CEO recently said that the company would repay $6.7 billion in loans from taxpayers with interest by June of this year. Now one of the things you need to know is that the steps we've taken to shore up the banks and the autos, they have nothing to do with the Recovery Act. Those were separate. We had to do those as emergency measures. And I just, I just want to point this out. Harry Reid, he's got his pollsters. I've got my pollsters. We knew that this wasn't going to be popular. But we did it because it was the right thing to do. So, it's also why we passed the Recovery Act. Now, a lot of people think that the stimulus package, the Recovery Act, if you, if you listen on television, you'd think, well, that's all about giving banks money. That has nothing to do with the banks. The other week I saw a poll that said Americans, they don't like the Recovery Act. They just like all the individual parts of the Recovery Act. <laughs> and the reason is they think the Recovery Act is for banks and auto companies. When you ask folks about what was actually in the Recovery Act, they think it's full of good ideas, like tax cuts, like infrastructure investment, like unemployment relief. That's what the Recovery Act was. It was tax cuts for small business owners, and 95% of you, you may not have noticed, 95% of you got a tax cut yeah. because of Harry Reid and because of the Recovery Act. One million people, one million people in the state of Nevada 
We, un uh, we expanded unemployment insurance at a time when it was absolutely vital for people as they were trying to stay afloat. More than, more than a quarter million of your members, of your neighbors. It was jobs for construction workers and jobs for cops and firemen and jobs for almost 2,000 education professionals right here in Nevada. I haven't talked to the principal, but I guarantee you we would have we would have seen some very difficult decisions having to be made about maintaining teachers right here at Green Valley if it hadn't been for the help that Harry Reid provided last year. You would have seen some very tough choices. All of this, from the tax cuts to the unemployment insurance to the jobs, that was only possible because of Harry's leadership. And as a result, our economy is growing again. Almost two million Americans who'd otherwise be employed are working right now because of what Harry Reid did. We're no longer staring into an economic abyss because of what Harry Reid helped to do. Now, he and I both know that's little comfort to the seven million Americans who lost their job in this recession. It's little comfort to homeowners who are facing foreclosure or steep declines in their home values or to students who are having to delay their college plans because they can't afford it, or older folks who are postponing retirement. That's why I'm not going to rest. That's not why we're not done. That's why Harry Reid isn't going to rest until all of America is working again, until the dream of home ownership is, is secure once again, until our economy is benefiting not just Wall Street, but benefiting hard-working Nevada families, benefiting the middle class, benefiting Americans all across this great country of ours. That's what we are aiming to do. Now, I've said before that the way I measure our economy's strength, the way you measure it, is by whether jobs and wages and incomes are growing. But the other way we measure it is by whether families have a roof over their heads and whether folks are living out that American dream of owning a home. That dream's been jeopardized in this recession for a lot of people, especially right here in Nevada. Now, part of it was, I've got to be blunt here, I've got to be honest, part of it was because too many lenders were focused on making a quick buck instead of acting responsibly. And, if we're honest, too many borrowers acted irresponsibly at, at certain points, taking on mortgages that they knew they couldn't afford. And what happened was the regulators in Washington and legislators too often turned a blind eye to the excesses and the failures on Wall Street that fed a housing bubble. And now that that bubble's burst, it's left devastation that we're still grappling with today. Now, government has a responsibility to help deal with this problem. Government can't solve this problem alone. We've got to be honest about that. Government alone can't solve this problem. And, and, and it shouldn't. But, but government can make a difference. It can't stop every foreclosure. And tax dollars shouldn't be used to reward the very irresponsible lenders and borrowers who help bring about the housing crisis. But what we can do is help families who've done everything right stay in their homes whenever possible. What we can do is stabilize the housing market so that home values can begin rising again. And that's why we're buying up vacant homes and converting them into affordable housing, creating jobs, stemming our housing crisis, growing the local economy. That's why last year we put a tax credit worth thousands of dollars into the pocket of 1.4 million Americans to help them buy their first home. Yeah. First time home buyers credit. That's why, that's why we're offering over 1 million struggling homeowners lower monthly payments through our loan modification initiative. And that's why today, thanks to the leadership of Harry Reid, I'm announcing a $1.5 billion fund for housing finance agencies in the states that are hardest hit by this housing crisis. And that means here in Nevada. Right here in Nevada. Right so, 
So this fund's going to help out-of-work homeowners avoid preventable foreclosures. They'll help homeowners who owe more than their homes are worth find a way to pay their mortgages that works for the, both the borrowers and the lenders alike. And we'll help folks who've taken out a second mortgage modify their loans. So, yes, we need to strengthen our housing market. And we need to focus on job creation and getting our economy moving again. But one, one last thing I want to I be clear about. It. 